Hey everybody, how are you? <laughs> uh, if you're thinking about getting a puppy or a dog, whether it's a rescue or you're going for purebred, you wanna make sure that you get the right dog for you and that you're right for the dog that you get. So, care, choose carefully. I'm Dr. Carolyn Lincoln with play to behave and you can find out more about me at playtobehave.com. Well, I just created a checklist because I thought it would be really helpful to most of you who are thinking of getting a puppy or dog. If you're thinking about, I'll just say dog from now on, if you're thinking about getting a dog, especially if you're thinking about doing it as a gift, you wanna make sure that you don't actually go get the dog. <laughs> just give everything that might go with a dog, make it a really exciting package, like a big you know, crate that you wrap up and all the toys and things inside, those can all be individually wrapped. You can make it really exciting, you can give pictures, you can give a dog breed, you know, book that'll help somebody choose, but giving the actual live animal isn't a great idea as a gift because people tend to scream and maybe scare or traumatize the dog. So we want to avoid that. But no matter what you're going to do, you want to make sure that you choose the right dog. So it's best if you think about all these different characteristics that you're going to want in a dog, whether that's how often they have to be groomed, how big they are, how much it's going to cost, um, whether or not they have athletic ability, um, you know, just a whole good big number of things that would be, you know, important for you to consider. And so I have about 40 of them in a list here. It's choose the right dog for you. And there's a link in the description so that you can download it. Um, when you're looking for a dog, one of my favorite books, and it's not, I don't think that the, you know, they ever updated it or they might've had another edition, but it might be difficult to find, but this is my, by Dr. Hart and Dr. Hart, um, Lynn and Ben Hart, they wrote this together. And what they did is some research. They're both veterinarians. They researched, um, and they're also into behavior, but they researched the different breeds, not all of them, but a good number of them. It's called the perfect puppy. There are many books with that title. So it's how to choose your book dog by its behavior and it's by heart and heart. And what I love about this book is that they did all these surveys to find out what characteristics um, are most common in a breed. Now, some of these change, right? Because when I was growing up, for example, a Doberman Pinscher was a really formidable dog <laughs> and scary. But now they're a lot more, their temperament is a lot more balanced than it used to be. And I think they're wonderful dogs. I thought they were wonderful dogs then, but they were scarier. <laughs> they might still be scary today, depending on how they are trained, but I'm just saying that the breed itself has changed. The looks of the breed change. If you look back at what German Shepherds looked like 30 years ago to now, or um, you know other breeds like a, even a Golden Retriever, it's quite different. And it depends if they're a show dog or if they're a working line. There's a lot of differences even within each breed. So when you look at a book like this, what I liked about it is they took all these different characteristics. For example, here, destructiveness, and then they rated all the dogs breeds that they have in here, which there's about 156, I think, in here. They rated all these breeds as to how destructive they are. Um, and again, this could have changed a little bit. And then what they did was they took each breed individually, like this is a bloodhound, and then they took all the characteristics that they did a survey on and um, rated them. Okay, so for example, you'll see a lot of these, you don't even see a bar in the bloodhound here. That's because they've rated it as this big box here is reactivity. And so that underneath reactivity, they have a variety of different characteristics, like if it's excitable, general activity, snaps at children, excessive barking, and demand for affection. All of those are very low in a bloodhound. But if you look at some of the other breeds in here, Let's find one that's a little bit higher. This is a chow chow. <laughs> and a chow chow gets a very high reading for snapping at children. So if you have kids, not the best choice, right? And this area here is about aggressiveness or aggression, trainability, and also investigation, which includes like destructiveness and playfulness. But they looked at these different characteristics, whether you agree or not, it gives you sort of a, something to measure against and to think about. And of course they go into detail about each one of these different characteristics. That's one of my kids drew on that. <laughs> they were little, yeah. 
Okay, then you can also get other guides to different breeds, like this one is a guide to, to a complete guide to dogs. So you can look at the pictures and see what appeals to you. And sometimes they separate into whether or not they're family dogs or sporting dogs or you know, great dog for an apartment and so on. There's other books like this one by Brian Kilcommons that you can look into and see different breeds. Then, um, oh, this one has the most breeds of all, if you can find it. It's by Desmond Morris. It's called Dogs. And he goes over like tons of breeds that you would, I mean, you're like, what? I never heard of that. And you'll find it in this book. And he goes over the characteristics. What I look for in a book and online, if you're going to look on the internet, is a balanced review. Because a lot of times they're just going to tell you how great that breed is. But you know what you want to know? Um, what some of the negatives are because they might not be negative to you and they might be something that you can tolerate and you're willing to work with but you want to make sure you know that for example the Australian Shepherd which is the breed that I have had most often that breed is a high drive playful excitable you know protective dog and if that's all they tell you you might think well wow that dog sounds great what they aren't telling you maybe is that you know, some of those traits can cause that dog to become aggressive and you have to be careful. They're real intelligent. You have to work with them. You have to do all kinds of things to help yourself, to protect yourself from a dog that becomes too aggressive. So you'd want to know that so that you can make that choice, you know, on your own. There's also a book that I have. I don't have it right in front of me, but it tells you the medical considerations and hereditary things that you might find in different breeds. So some breeds are more predisposed to cancer, for example, or seizures or, um, you know, orthopedic issues. And so those are things you want to look at also. I tried to cover all of these, as I said, in this handout. So you can, what I have here are three different columns. So you could take one dog one, dog two, dog three, and they could be rescue dogs, they can be from a breeder, they can be particular breeds. And then you can just mark down here each one of these characteristics, what you think, you know, is characteristic of that breed. So under grooming, you might say, needs it once a month, needs brushing every day. Well, that's important to know. You know, if you have arthritis or something and you're not going to be able to brush your dog every day, that's not a good choice for you. And you also want to think about the future because if you, um, you know, are going to have grandchildren soon or children of your own in the next 10 years, well, your dog's going to be a factor. You know, they're going to be part of your household and you're going to have this dog for maybe 15 to 20 years. And if that's true, you want to make sure that you're set up so that you can have them all that time. So, um, Think about some of those things. And again, this is that time of year because we're around December now <laughs> when people think about getting a pet as a gift for somebody. And if you do that, you want to make sure that you're not giving the actual live animal. That just isn't a good choice on a day that you're giving a gift. If they're really excited, really excited, go, go on YouTube and you'll find tons of these um, Christmas surprise videos and people scream and they cry and you know they're just so excited but they could be just as excited if it's a stuffed dog or if it's a breed book you know and then they're going to be happy but if they scream and cry around a new puppy or a dog I don't care how old that dog is they're going to be like oh my god what is going on here they're going to be freaked out and possibly traumatized you don't want to take that chance so that's the first thing. You can think about what else you want to get for that puppy or dog. But for right now, start thinking about what breed you want. It can take you a couple of months to pick what you want. So take that time. And I know it's hard to wait. I know, no, no. It's very, very hard to wait. But it's important that you do this. Once you know what breed or dog you want, then you want to think about the source also. All right. Thanks for watching me today. I'm Dr. Carolyn Lincoln with Play to Behave. And uh, happy training and enjoy your weekend.